Hi, I'm Pastor Goodman. And this is the Lord we God's life. All right, Internet. You know how when we crack the Bible open, the very first thing we always end up looking for is ourselves? Where do I fit into this? What must I do, O Lord, to be saved? It's why we deal with the parables in such a confusing manner. I'm always looking for which thing represents me. How can I be the one to earn my salvation? This is what we do when we grab the Bible. We will always read ourselves into the law. But we cannot, by our own reason or strength, read ourselves into the gospel. We're always looking for what must we do. We never quite see that Jesus has done all. We see it in the law, because it's real easy to read yourself into the law. I mean, the law tells you how you're supposed to relate to God and relate to your neighbor. And we almost lose sight of the fact that the law reveals who your God is. And the law is fulfilled by Jesus for you. But the thing is, if the only thing you're looking to do is read yourself into the law, you'll never look for a gospel to read yourself into at all. And that's the great thing about the gospel is that the gospel is for you. This is old Adam's flaw. This is old Adam's curse. He cannot for the life of him read himself into anything but works. Luther in the large catechism would write, But this is difficult, for we have always this obstacle and hindrance to encounter, that we look more upon ourselves than upon the word and lips of Christ. For nature desires so to act that it can stand and rest firmly upon itself, Otherwise, it refuses to make the approach. You see, we much rather would have this be about us than about Jesus for us because I want this to stand on something I can control. I want this to stand on me. The problem is, as much as I want the control, I don't know what to do with it. As much as I want the control, things don't go all that well when I have it. As much as you want the control, look to the law. This is how you're supposed to behave. How is that going for you? This is why our Lord would give you the gospel. He would make the gospel for you. Jesus, who died upon the cross, forgives your sins. And we have such a hard time receiving this gift. We cannot by our own reason or strength receive this gift because here we must find ourselves as a part of the gift that God would give, our, ourselves as the ones that God would give it to. In the large catechism, Luther would continue, these words I have said are not preached to wood and stone, but to me and you, else he just might as well be silent and not institute a sacrament. Therefore, consider and put yourself into this you. You see, one of the reasons that God gives us the sacrament is because he actually wants the for you to hit you, not the guy next to you, not y'all, everybody, sort of, you specifically. As surely as you ate and drank, you received the gospel. You received Jesus' forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation that he has purchased upon the cross and delivered by the Holy Spirit right for you. The reason that we have a sacrament to go along with this word is because as quickly as we will gravitate towards to-do lists, as quickly as we will gravitate towards the law, honestly, as quickly as we would gravitate towards the whole Bible and try and make it law, God wants this to be a gift. He wants this to be a gospel. He wants this to be the forgiveness of sins that has nothing to do with you doing anything, but entirely everything to do with you receiving everything. Read yourself into the for you, because God gives you the sacrament for that reason, that you would eat it and drink it and realize that this is where God gives you, specifically you, the gift of forgiveness, life, and salvation. This is the gift of the sacrament.